In today's video we're going to talk about a new super drug that's being used to absolutely decimate snake mites. Now I say new drug, it's newly used in snakes, but it's an old drug that's been available for cats and dogs for a while. What we are talking about is Nexgard. So this paper came out for some researchers in Italy where they gave Nexgard to some snakes that had mite infestations and the results were really, really interesting. What they found is they simply had to just put some next guard either squirted into the mouth of the snake or put it into the rodent that's been given to the snake and it turned out it was super effective. They treated 81 snakes and by the end of a 28 day period, the drug was still in the bloodstream of the snakes. They actually had quite a wide range of species they actually tested this on. Lampropeltis, Pantherophis, the genus Python, Anteresia, Boa Constrictors, Boa Imperata, so quite a wide range. So think of when you treat your cat or your dog and you put some flea treatment on the nape of their neck, soaks into their bloodstream, and that's how you treat for fleas. That's effectively what we're doing now with snakes. We're putting a little pill in the rodent, or we're liquidizing the pill like I'll show you in a minute, giving it to the rodent, giving it to our snakes, and it's in the snake's bloodstream so that if a snake might bites and takes a blood meal, it dies. And any eggs in the environment, they hatch out, they go to the snake, try to take their first blood meal, and they die too. And if it's administered properly and at the correct dose rate, it stays in the blood for a whole month. And 28 days was only the last time they tested. It could last even longer, we don't know. The dose rate they actually used in this paper was 2.5 milligrams per kilo of body weight. So we're going to use it for smaller species, which most of us probably will. We're going to have to do the maths and reduce the dose rate right down. So how I did that was liquidizing the tablet, and I'll show that for you now. Right, so we've got some hamsters here. I don't know if you can see them. No, you can't. Okay, let's bring it across. So rather wet hamsters. Got five hamsters, all different sizes. They're slightly smaller than what I would do for a full meal. But being slightly smaller, my idea is, is that it gets down quicker before they start, like, if they smell anything. So if it's a small little slurp for a king snake, I'm hoping they're gonna get it down in them and that'll be that, so. This is the infamous next guard we're going to be applying. So it is three tablets in here. And what we have to do is, I'm gonna liquidize this. So I'm gonna open up my syringe here, withdraw it and remove it completely. I'm gonna take one next guard tablet so to remove this tablet, I've kind of crushed it trying to get it out. But what I'm going to do is remove the tablet and put it straight into this syringe. So I'm going to just pop it in there. Right, so and then what I'm going to do is pop uh, this back in. Get all that in there. Lovely jubbly. But towards the end, I'm going to withdraw some of the water that I have here. I actually defrosted the mice in. I'm going to withdraw some. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug one end and uh, pull this and let go. And then because I've created a vacuum here, I've created a vacuum, it like pings back in like a ping ball machine. And because I've done that, it's going to liquidize this tablet really easily. And then I'll withdraw one mil from our solution. Again, I didn't think this is what I was gonna do with my Sunday, but there you go, I'm injecting hamsters. Pop this straight in. We're now gonna to go to a short interview with one of my patrons, Paul, who used NextGuard to treat his scrub pythons. And the results are equally as fascinating. Well, thank you for coming on, Paul. I wanna talk about how you use NextGuard. And I want to know, how did you come across NextGuard in the first place? Uh, where did I come across? Well, I'd, I'd heard about it a little bit on some of the Facebook groups like uh, Advancing Herpetological Husbandry or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really paid any attention to it because I figured, oh, well, I'm never gonna have mites. I don't really need to know about that. Uh, you know, I have good quarantine procedures and, uh, and so forth and then I found out that, oh crap, I have mites. <laughs> and um, uh, and so some of my other uh, friends in the community reminded me about NextGuard and um, uh, 
it set me on my path with that. So you found out about it, and obviously you've got big snakes, you've got scrub pythons. So with big snakes like that, how was or how bad was the mite infestation? Oh, dude, it was horrible. <laughs> it was really horrible. Um, so what the the longer answer to that is initially it wasn't bad at all. Um, all I I bought them as adults, and all I knew was that they liked to soak, um, and I had asked the the guy that I bought them from, uh, when I got them, like, Hey, these guys are soaking. Is there any chance they have mites? And he's like, I don't think so, but, um, you should, you know, cause I treat them for, I, I do, uh, treat them prophylactically with preventamite and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it seems really unlikely. Some scrubs just like to soak. And so they went along like that for several months. I never saw a single mite. They just, <clears throat> excuse me. They just soaked a lot. And then when my female laid her eggs and started spending all of her time in a warm, humid uh, nest box with no ability to soak anymore, then the mite population on her just exploded over the course of a less than a week. It went from zero visible animals to she was just covered with them. I mean, it was it was oh, it was awful. Like you'd see hundreds of them on her at at, at any one time. So without next guard, then, how would you have dealt with the problem? What would have been your methodology? Would you have used frontline sprays? Would you have used Taurus mites? Scrap the enclosure? What would you have had to have done without next guard available to you? If I didn't have next guard available, I, I don't know what I would have done. I, I mean, I suppose I would have had to pull her from the eggs um, and then done the typical thing of put her in a in a sterile enclosure with probably I would have started with preventamite because that's, that's what my friends use. Um, and, and, and tried that. Uh, I would have reached out to a bunch of other more experienced scrub keepers too, and asked them what, what they did. But um, I really didn't want to pull her off the eggs because she'd only been on them for like maybe 10 days at that point. Um, so uh and, but I didn't want to use anything. I guess, I guess I would have pulled her because without next guard, I would have had to use a topical treatment that would have been on the eggs and those eggs are super porous. So with the next guard, how did you actually administer the drug to her? So I only gave her one dose. It's amazing. Um, uh, I had the smallest dose pill, which uh, is for a small dog. And I cut it in half. And, um, which was, I came up with the, the cutting it in half amount based on like, what was the, um, what was the correct dosage for her weight mm -hmm. and, um, thought out a rat and made a little incision in the skin under the, you know, on the rat's back. Some people put them in their mouths, but I figured, okay, if I, if I just put it under a, an incision on the, um, on its back, the, the pill will be digested more quickly. Um, and, and I use a, a relatively small feeder so that I, I didn't have to worry about her manipulating it very much that, you know, she would just basically strike it and just slurp it right down, which she did. Um, a little parenthetical note, I got really lucky because she's been eating while she's been doing maternal incubation, which as you know, many snakes don't, but, um, but she's been very happy to eat, <laughs> um, while she's been sitting on the eggs. So after giving that to her, how did that affect the mite population? Oh, uh, within, you know, within two days, there was hardly anything left uh, vi visible anyway. I have a, I have a camera in the nest box so I can, um, so I can see what's going on. That's how I figured out, oh, geez, she has, <laughs> that's how I figured it out to begin with. Um, so uh, yeah, you could see a, a dramatic decrease really, really quickly. Um, and then it tailed off, um, tailed off over the course of a week or so. And then I added, um, predatory mites to the nest box, uh, subsequently there were still some little, uh, critters crawling around in the box, in the nest box. I couldn't tell for sure if they were snake mites or not. Um, cause I was only seeing them on the camera. I couldn't see them to the naked eye and, um, and then over the course of 
a few more weeks with with I'm assuming the continued action of the next guard as the you know as the snake mites hatch out um, from the eggs that are still in there and the predatory mites um, eventually that took care of it and now I'm not seeing anything in there at all anymore. Yeah, I think this is amazing. So thank you for so much for coming on to this video, Paul. I think it's going to help a lot of people. And uh, thank you for helping with this video. Just think of the implications of this. Our big naturalistic enclosures we spent hundreds on, big bioactives, which before normally you would either try and taurus mite and with varying success or have to tear it down. But now you can just simply dose their food and feed them like usual. If you have big broody retics that want nothing to do with you and it's an absolute hassle to try and deal with a mite problem you can just treat their food if you've got venomous snakes and they have mites treat their food this honestly seems like the ideal solution we've all been waiting for now this is a prescription drug so you're going to have to go to a vet and there are going to be implications for that so you're going to need a prescription to actually get the drug but this is an unlicensed newly published paper so what that means is a lot of veterinarians might not even know about this so there will be hesitation with accepting its use but as we go forward in time i think it's going to really really garner some popularity just think about how this can be implemented into a quarantine procedure you get your animal it comes in you quarantine it first meal next guard you've got a shop new animals you've got in to sell first meal next guard honestly this might be a game changer. Now as exciting as this is, we do have to have a little bit of caution here. Not every single species ever has been tested in this paper. Things like hog noses that were sensitive to the Cannington sprays and things like that, maybe they're sensitive to this, we don't know. So there's gonna be a little bit of hesitancy, but the potential is here. If you like these kinds of videos and you want to see more videos like this in the future and you want to be up to date with what's going on and when it comes out, I'm normally on the ball. So subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next one.